Who's more motivated, the Detroit Lions or Jimmy Garoppolo? Welcome back to Brave Birds DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course, DFS. If you don't know by now, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. Why my channel? Well, my goal is to help you by looking at and showing you my thought process so you can win that NFL guap. All right, so this should be a good game. The Lions got punched in the mouth last week. They were not expecting it. I don't think most of us were expecting it was going to be that bad, even if it was going to be a loss. And a lot of people kind of forget about the Raiders because they're in the division with the Chiefs, but the Raiders are three and four right now. They can win a couple of games, and the next thing you know, they are a wild card team. So how I like to start off this thought process is I like to give you five players. A lot of them are kind of scrubs, you know, scrubs or value players that I believe could be the difference makers in this contest. Because if you all have been, you know, playing showdown this year, you usually have one, maybe two players that are under $4,000 that no one is expecting. Or if they're expecting it, they're not, their ownership is really low. And they're the difference between you winning $45 and go buying you a new fishing rod or $45,000 and buying you a new fishing boat. I'm assuming, I've never thought about buying a boat. Let me know how much a boat costs. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna look at these five players. And the first player we have here is Austin Hooper. And it's no doubt about it, Austin Hooper is now the second string uh, tight end for the Raiders. Mayer, who we'll also discuss, has come in and he's definitely taken over that spot. So much so, it is insane for me to see that Austin Hooper uh, salary is only $800. But I promise you, this is the same Austin Hooper that we knew from previous years that was definitely the tight end one. And you can see he's still getting multiple targets. Uh, the last four games, he's gotten two targets. So uh, he's been on the field. We can look at his snap count and we can see that um, he's been on the field, you know, between 50 and 30% of the time. It's gone down because as we'll talk about, and if you've been following fantasy football and DFS, you know, this is now Michael Mayer's team. But Nonetheless, at $800, it just takes one touchdown for him to return value and for him to be that person in your lineup that can cause you to definitely win some big guap in this showdown contest. Now, the next person I have, I, and you can see they're all Vegas players. Vegas has a lot of value. Uh, next, you have Trey Tucker. Uh, the last two games, he's had multiple targets. He still hasn't uh, had that touchdown, but we can look. What makes him so intriguing is he was on the field almost 50% of the snaps last game, and even the previous game, about 30% of the snaps. So he's on the field a lot for someone that is only $600. And then speaking of players who have fallen off, we talk about Austin Hooper. Man, Hunter Renfro last year, I mean, he was just amazing. This year, once again, no touchdowns. He did have three targets the last game. And you know, he's trending up from, you know, week one where he got no fantasy points and just ruined a lot of lineups. But at 1,200, I mean, definitely someone that you can sneak into some of your lineups. You can look and see that he was on the field 37% of the time, minus the previous week, he's been on the field at least 30% of the time, 65, 51, 45, 30. So someone that has his talent that's on the field that much, I mean, you just sometimes, you gotta throw him in a lineup or two. And then you have Zamir White, and we can see that uh, he's had multiple attempts three out of the last four games, and he's had multiple receptions and targets uh, the last two games. So only 1,600. We know this is Josh Jacobs' team, but we also know when it comes to running backs, it just takes one you know, fluke play, and next thing you know, you're gonna have Zamir White in there, or it just takes one broken tackle for Zamir White to have a 60 yard run and a touchdown, and all of a sudden, you're at the top of the leaderboard. And then, as I mentioned, you have 
Michael Mayer, who just took the job over from uh, who, the, from Hooper. You can see started at 49% and now he's been on the field 66, 81, and 71% of the time. He had a little bit of an off game last game, which hopefully is going to lower his ownership. But you can just look at the targets, four, six, and three. So he's really just stepped up his game and someone that you definitely want to target. And I'm going to give a bonus player because I didn't give any uh, I didn't give any um, Detroit players. I like Craig Reynolds. Now he's the backup running back because once again, David Montgomery is not in the game. We can look what he did last game and he averaged 5.3 yards to carry. And so he's had some good games as far as yards per carry and he's going to get a reception or two. So definitely at 3,200, someone that can really, really mess things up. All right, so we'll go back to the snap counts and we'll look at these quickly so we can see a running back. As we mentioned, this is Josh Jacobs, you know, team when it comes to the running backs. Uh, last week was his lowest percentage and it was 66 percent. You have Jacob Johnson, who's a fullback, so he's on the field a lot. But, you know, there could be a trick play that could get thrown to him. You have Amir Abdullah and we talked about uh, Zamir White already. So wide receiver, this is where it gets very interesting. If you really haven't been following the Raiders or fantasy football, you would assume that Devontae Adams is the person uh, who's been doing better this year. But actually, Jacoby Myers has outplayed Devontae Adams uh, so far this year. And the difference in salary makes it very, very intriguing. And we talked about Hunter Renfro and you have Trey, uh, Trey Tucker and a few other wide receivers. And then at tight end, we talked about Austin Hooper and Michael Mayer. All right, let's look at the Lions. And as we mentioned, Dave Montgomery is going to be out. So it's going to be Jameer Gibbs uh, as the main running back. I think he had his first touchdown of the year last week. And I mean, with that Lions offensive line, he is really in a good spot to do really well this week. And we've already talked about Craig Johnson. So a wide receiver, Amarad St. Brown. I'm just assuming he's going to play. So this analysis that I'm giving you assumes that he's not going to let an illness keep him off the field. Obviously, if he's not going to play, man, there's a lot of value in Josh Reynolds. There's a lot of value in Raymond and there's a lot of value in Williams. So but if Amara St. Brown plays and he's not hampered by any kind of illness, he is the best fantasy football option in this contest. Hands down. He just he's just a PPR machine. At tight end, everybody knows now the rookie Sam Laporta is one of the best DFS tight ends going right now. He's back up Brock Wright, who's on the field 35% of the time. But uh, when it comes to the red zone, uh, golf just really has, you know, a laser, you know, for Laporta. But with that being said, <laughs> Brock Wright is the stone cold minimum at 200. And he has, he, he wasn't targeted last game, but he's been targeted this year. So, I mean, I like those kind of players. So if you're really trying to get real salsa with one of your lineups, you know, I like Brock Wright, but it just hasn't worked out so far this year. All right, so I showed you, I showed you some of the players that I think are kind of can be difference makers, and I'll show you two of my lineups. So one lineup I really like, I really like Jacoby Myers. So for those of you all who have been paying attention, you can see that he's had 13 targets, 7, 10, 4, and 12 targets, and 10 targets. So even with uh, Devontae, Devontae Adams just being who he is, he's still been able to soak up a lot of targets and translate those targets into five touchdowns and a lot of fantasy points. So I like him in the captain's position and we talked about gibbs is his team he averaged look at look at his uh his uh average his yards per carry 6.2 he's still getting receptions i mean 27 fantasy points so really like the rookie gibbs and we know same thing with laporta seven targets 11 targets i mean just one of the best you know dfs tight ends and we know golf you're gonna you're gonna want to have golf he's um I mean, he's not he's not amazing, but he's also not bad. And you can see that he did have one of his worst games of the year uh, last week. But I mean, 
we don't have to talk about last week, but you can see what his ceiling is. You can see his ceiling is 25 to 27 points. So if he has one of those games, then you're sitting real pretty. And then you have Jimmy Garoppolo. And we, we know that a lot of people see him as a game manager. At this point, he has more interceptions and touchdowns. But we also see that he has a ceiling that can peak over 20 points. And I've already mentioned how wild, why I believe Zamir Wright is someone you should sprinkle in some of your lineups. All right. So final lineup, Amarai St. Brown. We're just assuming that he's not going to be injured. So definitely never hurts to put him in the captain spot. <laughs> Look at these games. 26 points, 33, 16, 22, 18, 19. So <laughs> if he steps on the field, if he's well enough to step on the field, it's kind of hard to fade him. You see, I did fade him. I faded him and I did, I faded him and uh, Adam. So, I mean, sometimes when you want to win these showdown contests, you got to be real saucy. You got to be nasty. You got to do some, some crazy stuff. But in general, it's kind of hard to fade Brown. It's kind of hard to fade Devontae Adams. And then you see, I sprinkled in Trey Tucker, Mayer, and I kept in Laporta. So let me know your thoughts. If you have any specific questions, leave a comment. But otherwise, I'll talk to you next time. Thank you for watching my video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I'll talk to you next time.